بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله In the previous lesson, we learned about the nature of divine revelation. As usual, the link to the previous video as well as the book under study, The Philosophy of the Teachings of Islam, is given in the description below. Now, this is the final episode of this series in which we will be learning about the third source of knowledge described by the Holy Quran. So let's get started. The third source of knowledge is certainty through experience. His Holiness explains that what this means is that through the hardships and calamities and sufferings that are experienced by the prophets and righteous people at the hands of their opponents, or even those that are imposed upon them by divine decree, all the commandments of the divine law and its directions that were comprehended by the human mind intellectually appear in a practical shape through the conduct and behavior of such people. His Holiness explains, All the moral qualities like forbearance, retribution, endurance, mercy, etc., which hitherto pervaded the mind and heart theoretically, become part of the personality through practical experience and make their impress upon the total personality of the sufferer. As God the Glorious has said, and we will try you with something of fear and hunger, and loss of wealth, and lives, and fruits, but give glad tidings to the patient, who, when a misfortune overtakes them, say, Surely to Allah we belong, and to him shall we return. It is these on whom are blessings from their Lord, and mercy, and it is these who are rightly guided. These verses indicate that there is no virtue in the knowledge that is confined to the mind and heart. True knowledge is that which emerges from the mind and regulates and trains all the limbs and manifests in practice all the store of memory. Thus knowledge is strengthened and fostered through its impress being imposed on all the limbs by practical experience. No type of knowledge, however elementary, arrives at its climax without practice. His Holiness states that just as wealth is multiplied by commerce, in the same way, knowledge arrives at its spiritual climax through practical experience. This is why practical experience is the fundamental means of perfecting knowledge. His Holiness adds that the ultimate certainty of knowledge is achieved through experiencing every part of it. This is exactly what happened during the inception of Islam. God Almighty provided the Muslims with the opportunity to illustrate whatever they were taught in the Holy Quran in their practice and thus became filled with its light. This is especially true in regard to the life of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of God be upon him, who is described as the best role model and epitome of spirituality. His Holiness states in this regard, That is why God Almighty divided the life of the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, into two phases. One phase of hardship and calamities and sufferings and the other of victory so that during the phase of sufferings those high moral qualities might be demonstrated which come into play at such times, and during the phase of victory and authority those high moral qualities might be illustrated which cannot be displayed in the absence of authority. Thus both these types of qualities were perfectly illustrated in the life of the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. By his passing through both these phases and conditions, during the period of trials in Mecca, which extended over 13 years, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, demonstrated in practice 
all the high qualities which a perfectly righteous person should exhibit at such a time, such as trust in God, perfect serenity, under sufferings, steady and eager carrying out of duties and fearless courage. Observing his steadfastness, many of the disbelievers believed in him and thus testified that it is only the one who has complete trust in God who can display such steadfastness and endurance of suffering. During the second phase, that is to say the phase of victory, authority and prosperity, he demonstrated such high qualities as forbearance, forgiveness, benevolence and courage, so that a large number of the disbelievers believed in him through witnessing his exercise of those high qualities. He forgave those who had persecuted him, granted security to those who had expelled him from Mecca, bestowed great wealth upon those among them who were in need and having op obtained authority over his bitter enemies, forgave them all. Witnessing his high morals, many of them testified that such qualities could only be demonstrated by one who comes from God and is truly righteous. His Holiness further elaborates that a person cannot truly be deemed righteous or having certain qualities until and unless he or she passes through a situation which requires the practical manifestation of such qualities in the most difficult of circumstances. For example, a person who has never had the opportunity to take revenge cannot be described with the moral quality of enduring hardship or non-resistance for it is not known how he would have behaved if he had the opportunity to take revenge. His Holiness adds that unless a person passes through hardships and achieves authority and prosperity, his true qualities cannot be manifested. And it is obvious that you cannot truly estimate if a person has the qualities of courage and forgiveness whose whole life is spent in a state of weakness and helplessness, enduring persecution all the time, and is never in a position of authority and prosperity. We cannot make any estimate of his character as we do not know how he would have treated his enemies if he had overcome them, or how he would have spent his wealth if he had become prosperous. Now, this is why and how the Holy Prophet outshone all past prophets and was given the title of the best man. He not only preached spiritual and moral reformation and communion, but he was quite literally a living and breathing example of it. His Holiness states, In the case of the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, Divine favour and grace afforded him full opportunity for the manifestation of his moral qualities. He displayed generosity, bravery, meekness, forbearance and equity on their appropriate occasions to such perfection that it would be a vain effort to look for their match in any other person. In both phases of his life, in weakness and power, indigence and prosperity, he demonstrated to the whole world to what high degree he comprehended all the moral qualities. There is no high moral quality for the exercise of which God Almighty did not afford him an opportunity. All excellent moral qualities like bravery, generosity, steadfastness, forbearance, meekness, etc. were in his case so clearly established that it is not possible to seek his equal. It is also true that those who had carried their persecution of him to the extreme and had designed the destruction of Islam were not left unpunished by God. To forego chastisement in their case would have amounted to the destruction of the righteous under the heels of their enemies. Bringing us to the end of today's lesson, and in fact, the end of this series, I hope you've enjoyed this journey with us. If so, please do make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, and also please do share this video or these videos in fact so that we can enable more people to benefit from the treasures left behind by his holiness Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad alayhi salatu wasalam the promised messiah and Mahdi who was foretold by the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam 
Until next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.